Hello, everyone, and welcome to our continuing series of online webinars brought to you by the Sandy Granite Family History Center. And uh, tonight we have as our special guest a uh, wonderful, vibrant young lady that uh, I've known for a while. It's uh, Angel Anderson, and uh, she has uh, a couple of other videos. Uh, on our uh, website, which you can view, of course, at any time. And then uh, she and her husband, Scott, uh, have done a number of videos, uh, the latest of which were several uh, done on uh, Roots Tech and uh, Roots Tech Connect this year. And you can find those too, 24 seven, whenever you'd like uh, to see those. Um, Angel uh, has done, gosh, all kinds of things. But uh, most notably for us, she's a member of the uh, management team for the Family History Guide and the Family History Guide Association. And uh, she is one of the writers of the, uh, what used to be called the Come Follow Me Companion. <laughs> and now I can't remember the real name of it now anyway. But... Weekly Family Ac That's History it. Activities, That's Come it. Follow I Me Companion. <laughs> I can't keep up. But that is an absolutely wonderful resource. And of course, it's available on the Family History Guide. And it's a free resource uh, for you. Um, and uh, the title of Angel's uh, class tonight is one that uh, it's an area that is near and dear to her heart. And if you want to find, if you're ever looking for her, just go find a group of youth and she'll be right in the middle of it. Um, whatnot she and her husband scott but um tonight's class is helping the youth <clears throat> excuse me discover the power of connecting with the past and this is uh, a a great a great topic and i know here at the family history center um, we have a, a very vibrant youth program uh, we have i think about 35 or 40 youth consultants and um, if you've ever had the great opportunity to be around the youth when they're doing family history, it is absolutely infectious. And uh, so tonight's program will uh, help explain some things and uh, help perhaps you and whatever your situation is with your family or your calling or whatever it might be to uh, get uh, your youth more involved uh, with family history. So we're going to turn the time now over. Uh, one other quick source. Uh, you can, of course, view this class 24-7, uh, 365 on the uh, Granite Family History Center's website. And uh, I'll put that link up under the chat uh, area so you can uh, get to it at any time. And it's also, of course, a free resource or whatnot. So, Angel, it's all yours. Thank you so much, and thanks for that introduction. And thank you for calling me a young lady. I think talking about the youth tonight, we can start out with the fact that President Nelson um, has defined youth as anyone younger than he is. And so this class is for everyone that is under 97 years of age, right? So we are all youngins, and let's just talk about what it's like to help the youth all of us become closer to Christ through family history and closer to our ancestors. And, you know, the youth though that are 12 to 18 have a specific invitation from our prophet. And we are gonna start out with that because that will set us out on the, the pathway to find and discuss exactly, I shouldn't say find, to hear and discuss what he has asked the youth to do what he has invited them to do um, is very specific and they do have an important um, responsibility and opportunity to gather on both sides of the veil. So let's hear what our prophet has to say about that as we begin today. Bob, is that full screen? Yep. 
The Lord told the prophet Joseph Smith that now, meaning our day, is the eleventh hour and the last time that he will call laborers into his vineyard for the express purpose of gathering the elect from the four quarters of the earth. My question tonight to every one of you between the ages of 12 and 18 is this. Would you like to be a big part of the greatest challenge, the greatest cause, and the greatest work on earth today? Would you like to help gather Israel during these precious latter days? Would you, who are the elect, be willing to help find the elect who have not heard the message of the restored gospel? Would you like to be among those swift messengers of whom the prophet Isaiah spoke? Now, participating in the gathering of Israel will require some sacrifice on your part. It may even require some changes in your life. It will definitely take some of your time and energy and your God-given talents. Are you interested? Just think of the excitement and urgency of it all. Every prophet commencing with Adam has seen our day, and every prophet has talked about our day when Israel would be gathered and the world would be prepared for the second coming of the Savior. Think of it. Of all the people who have ever lived on planet Earth, we are the ones who get to participate in this final great gathering event. How exciting is that? Our Heavenly Father has reserved many of His most noble spirits, perhaps I might say His finest team, for this final phase. Those noble spirits, those finest players, those heroes are you. Those heroes are the youth of today, the youth that live in a crazy world with tumultuous events going on all around them. But they have a specific responsibility to gather Israel. And tonight we'll talk about part of that, which is gathering Israel on the other side of the veil, gathering Israel on both sides of their commission. Um, but sometimes, and I know you've probably had this experience of youth thinking differently about family history than we do, especially those of us that are so interested and love it so much. Um, we have um, kind of a challenge sometimes with um, our youth and getting them to accept what the prophet has said and also to answer that question, are you interested? Maybe especially to answer that question. So let's just look at this. Okay. The Lord told okay. the prophet Joseph. So we are. Smith that now. Out of here. Let's see. Of gathering the elect from the four quarters of the earth. Okay, next. Family history there we go. is not just for old people, like my grandparents do it. What am I supposed to do? I've generally been interested in family history, but I feel like I have to have like a PhD to be able to do it because it's just so complicated and there's so much out there. I feel like a lot of the time I get stuck, especially when I'm trying to research family from different countries and I just don't really know where to look for the information. So what I'm going through in life right now, I'm newly married and I work a lot, and it just seems like family history is something that will take my time away from doing things that I want to do. It just seems a little boring to me. I'm a busy mom. Okay, so those are some roadblocks to family history and youth and youth getting involved, right? And you can probably think of a lot more. Um, we, they want it to be, well, let's put it this way. Anything they are interested in needs to be not only interesting and relevant and not boring. Um, they 
just feel like it needs to be like exciting and something that's going to keep their focus and you know all of those things that stop them like we said like Seth said maybe some um some youth feel like he did that it's for old people those youngins that are just younger than the prophet right <laughs> um so what do we do about that how do we help them get over that mindset and how do we help them see the joy in family history and get over things that are prohibiting them from enjoying it and learning it and making it part of their lives. And also, what resources are available to help us bring the spirit of Elijah into the hearts of the youth that we know and love? Where do we start? Well, I would say we need to start with being converted ourselves and believing in the promises that have been given to us by the prophets and the apostles and and i just want you to know that i believe in the promises and i would just love to go over those promises right now and just as you listen to these how do you feel about them how do you feel that um they have affected your family how can they how can you make part our family history and temple work more a part of your life as an example to those youth that you know and love. A lot of people have questions and concerns in regards to family history, but the Family History Guide is a tool okay. that I've used. And then we're gonna go on to the next one, let's see. Welcome nope, we to the Family not. History Guide Show Me series. Okay, let's go to... Um, Let's see. Okay, so <clears throat> the promises video, I am just trying to see where that went. Here it is. Okay, so is that working at all, Bob? Not yet, we still uh, see your screen. Okay, there we go, thank you. While temple and family history work has the power to bless those beyond the veil, it has an equal power to bless the living. It has a refining influence on those who are engaged in it. This is how you and I become saviors on Mount Zion. There is a joy and satisfaction that is only understood through spiritual feelings. We are linked to them forever. As an apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ, I leave my blessing upon you with a promise that if you look beyond the bonds of time and mortality and help those who cannot help themselves, you will be blessed with more closeness and joy in your family and with the divine protections afforded those who are faithful in his service. As you respond in faith to this invitation, your heart shall turn to the fathers. The promises made to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob will be implanted in your hearts. Your patriarchal blessing with its declaration of lineage will link you to these fathers and be more meaningful to you. Your love and gratitude for your ancestors will increase. Your testimony of and conversion to the Savior will become deep and abiding. You'll find not only protection from the temptation and ills of this world, but you'll also find personal power, power to change, power to repent, power to learn, power to be sanctified, and power to turn the hearts of your family together and heal that which needs healing. Your own knowledge and faith in the Savior will increase, and you will receive a more certain witness that life continues beyond the veil. I know that life continues beyond the veil. I know it. I invoke a special blessing on you, parents, you youth, and you children, 
that each of you will find joy and be blessed in every other aspect of your life as you fulfill the obligation that has been sent from heaven. And I promise you will be protected against the intensifying influence of the adversary. As you participate and love this holy work, you will be safeguarded in your youth and throughout your lives. I can hardly watch that without crying. Those promised blessings are incredible. They are astonishingly breathtaking, as Elder Redland says. We want to wrap our youth in those promises and help them know that they are true. And as simple as it seems that just doing family history and temple work can bring them about is another astonishing statement, isn't it? Um, and an astonishing thought, but it is right and it is true and is it can can come to pass for the youth that we know and love. It can, but we have a part in this and we are needed to help them know and um, learn how to make family history part of their lives and how to, um, yeah, just, just learn to love it like we do, right? Um, President Nelson, when he was giving, um, when he was ending his worldwide devotional for the youth, he said um, that, well, he said directly to them, you have the capacity to be smarter and wiser and have more impact on the world than any other previous generation. When I am with the youth, I feel that. Um, and you know what? That is where we come in. We have, they have this capacity but they don't always, live up, oh, don't always live up to it. Sometimes they don't know where to go. They don't know what to do. They haven't been exposed to the spirit of Elijah enough. And so our part in all of this is to make that happen, to provide opportunities, to create experiences and an atmosphere in which they can learn to love family history and the temple more. Um, and it's a genuine, genuine concern for all of us who can see how much they need it, right? So when we think about the youth, what, what do they like to do? Um, let's just go through some of those things. They like to have options, right? Um, they like competition and challenge. They like to be involved and have hands-on experiences. They don't like to just stand and watch or sit and listen, right? Um, they wanna have a reason for doing things and they want the things that they select to do to be relevant to their lives. Um, they need rec recognition for their efforts, appreciation. And if you know the youth like I do, they love to be with their friends. They love to be with their peers. They love to be in groups for the most part. And, you know, these, I think basically they, they love food. They love fun. They love things to be exciting, right? So how do we tap into that? And how do we correlate all of those things that they like with family history so that it's like one great work in their lives. And they can see that they don't have to be weird or different in this manner to, to love family history, that they can still be like a regular youth and a teen and, and still be doing all these fun things that bring the spirit into their lives. So let's just have um, Annie, who is a youth, introduce one of the things that I can't live without. I love what she's going to talk to you about, which is the Family History Guide. That is going to be, if you're not familiar with it, it will be your new best friend. And you will have this resource in your fingers, at your fingertips, that will enable you to help the youth in practically every way they need concerning temple and family history work, at least in learning it and loving it and being able to make it part of their lives. Um, Elder Bednar said, parents and leaders, please help your children and youth to learn about and experience the spirit of Elijah. The Family History Guide is a tool to help that happen. To not over-program, he said, but just let them explore and experience and learn for themselves. So let's see if we can get 
Annie back up here. I think it's that one. Let's try it. A lot of people have questions and concerns in regards to family history, but the Family History Guide is a tool that I've used that has helped me and a lot of people I love to understand and enjoy family history better. Family History Guide is free and mobile friendly. You can customize your experience and quick start your journey by starting a project. Projects take you step by step to help you view your family tree through the four main sites. Family Search, Ancestry, My Heritage, and Find My Past. For example, you can learn how to build a family tree in Ancestry just like you do in Family Search. All projects in the Family History Guide are built on goals, choices, and steps to help you learn faster and easier. There are thousands of links to take you where you need to go. For example, our family plays the Family History Fun Basket a lot. It is easy to do anytime and anywhere. This is a no prep activity and you can see a video all about it on the Family History Guide YouTube channel. In fact, all the no prep activities on the site are marked with an asterisk. There are also links to a ton of games and activities found on other sites like FamilySearch.org. There are countless things to do with your friends and your family. My family has loved to get together and bond over these fun games and fun things to do that teach you family history, but are also enjoyable because a lot of people think it's kind of boring, but it's not, it's so fun and I love to do it. And there's a page just for youth, for kids my age to go to find fun ideas so family history doesn't seem as intimidating. It's all right here to give us ideas for things to do that are relevant to us. Now I've only covered a very small portion of the family history guide. Look at this menu. It's so exciting to be able to make your family history journey easier, more efficient, and more. Okay. So at the end there, she said, easier, more efficient, and more enjoyable, right? The family history guide, like I said, your new best friend. If you're not familiar with it, check it out. We're gonna go over a few things about the youth and see what they have for us in store on the Family History Guide to help us in our commission to help the youth, right? Um, to help them be as the prophet at our question them, interested, are you interested? We want them to be interested and the Family History Guide can help us do that. So let's just take a look at, um, Let's see, that's not it. Ooh. Let's stop share and let's escape. Here we go. All right. The Family History Guide is a free site, as Annie said. And basically, this is your go to to help the youth um, with any part of family history. So you can see that here are the top menu items and you get to youth and we are going to go, going to go straight down to latter-day saints no. and joe we can't see your screen oh you can't nope. um okay we'll stop share and we will try one more time and let's go to um okay we'll go up here and we'll there go it to, is. we to got right. it you got it yep perfect Okay, so this is the Family History Guide, the free site for everything that you ever wanted to learn about the Family History Guide to do with youth. In fact, we will go through some of those. So the way I found this is up at the top, we have our youth page, our youth menu item and the Latter-day Saint page. We'll go straight there. You can see up at the top here, hopefully, that these are the categories. Gathering Israel, and taking ancestors to the temple, temple and family history activities, family heritage, weekly family history activities, service, and warden stake activities. So let's start and just show you on Gather Israel what this is like and how, the, how it's organized and how each of these sections has ideas and suggestions of activities for the youth to do. So here's President Nelson's call to action. Here's enlisting in the battalion. Here's an activity that helps youth prepare the world for the second coming and talk about, talks about how the Book of Mormon um, is, has everything to do with the gathering and what the prophet asked them to do in the devotional that he gave in 2018. Um, 
Here's a video about sacrificing time to do temple and fam family history work like the prophet has asked. And here's some ideas how to do that. Connecting the past to the present, four easy ways to discover your activities, your, your ancestors in five minutes or less. So basically the links are all here. Everything's right in front of you. You don't have to even think about it. You can just go to any of these topics and there will be fun games to play, videos to watch. The youth can just go here. This is all written to them. It's not about them, it's to them. Okay, the video we just watch is on there. All right, so that's gathering Israel, taking ancestors to the temple. This opens the path to temple blessing, blessings for your ancestors and it teaches them how to do that, what the invitation is, um, the promises, partaking of their promises. The video that we just watched about the promised blessings is right there. And preparing names for the temple, the temple challenge from Elder Anderson. Becoming saviors on Mount Zion and more videos to watch. It's all right there. Temple and family history activities, experience the joy. Okay, so here's an activities overview. Um, Family History Discovery. And I think we'll take one minute and watch that video if it'll play on here. Because this shows what youth can do with family search tools to learn about their ancestors. I have a firm conviction that the more they know about their ancestors, the more they love them. And the more open they are to know when those ancestors are helping them, not just through the veil now, but by learning their stories and learning what they sacrificed that the youth can have the lives that they do today. Um, it's interesting that there have been a lot of studies, um, one in particular out of Emory University, that talks about how just having a family narrative, talking about these experiences that your ancestors have had during dinner, in the car, bedtime, whenever, um, helps children be more, uh, and youth, children and youth be more secure, to feel like their families are happier, to um, know their self-worth, to be more confident. So many things that just talking about the stories and getting to know the people that went before does for them, helps them be not only happier, but more well-adjusted and emotionally secure and well. So let's watch the Family History Discovery Detective Day. Welcome to Discovery Detective Night. The family we're going to explore is Grandpa Rule and Grandma Jan Clark. My mom and dad. And as our grandchildren, we want you to be able to see what they saw, touch what they touched, read and hear, and taste what they tasted. Our hope for you is to learn what they learned and feel what they felt. And the place we always start is the fan chart. New wonderful features including stories and countries have been added to this fan chart and each of you has an assignment to discover something about them. Something that's special to me about my grandma Jan is all the fun food she makes and the recipes she has. I was able to go on Family Search and see fun pictures and stories of when we made them. Another fun way to express my love for family history to share about its stories I've been through or experiences I'm having on social media for my friends to see as well. I discovered something really awesome about my great grandma. When and where she was born and that she was married at 17 to her next door neighbor. That really means a lot to me because that's about my age right now. And that would really take a lot of courage. They've been married for 68 years and that is really amazing to me. In trying to understand my grandpa Roel better, I looked up some information about his father, my great great grandfather, Orson Clark. Through the Family Search Discovery website, I learned he served a mission to Hawaii and I found a picture of him directing a mandolin band while he was there, which was super cool for me. 
Some people in our family have not discovered how delicious bowls are. It's just a peanut butter and honey sandwich broken up into a bowl with milk poured over it. My grandpa Rule grew up in the Depression and they were very poor. And since then it has become a fun family tradition and I really love them. Being able to talk to my great grandma through this app and being able to record her stories and read her journals has been an incredible experience for me. It's helped me discover and learn about my past, and more about her and about the person I can become because of her example. These tools are incredible and they help us learn things that I probably wouldn't have known beforehand. I just had the opportunity to interview with Grandpa Rule and about his military service. It was incredible to learn a lot of things that I hadn't previously known and go deeper into these stories. I'm super excited to continue with this and to learn more stories from a lot of different ancestors. Anyway, so many fun ideas, and you can see how the youth were affected. In fact, this was such an interesting experience because right after um, we had finished filming and we were just leaving that evening when we were filming this particular video, we got a call from the hospital and um, we were informed that my father, who had been well the day before and even that morning, was dying. And uh, we were to go to the hospital. Of course, we were going to go, would go up and be with him. So we left the kids. We said goodbye to our videographer. And the kids who had just studied his life together and made this little video um, just waited, waited to see what was going to happen. And my dad, when my dad passed away, we let them know. And they sat around that timeline. And one of them wrote his death date at the end at that timeline. And they just shared experiences and it was so real and so raw and it's an experience that they will never ever forget. So as we try and do our best to create experiences and an atmosphere in which the spirit of Elijah can grab a hold of their hearts and help them to know that they come from a legacy of those who have gone before who loved them and who will always love them and who will be there to help them. So Temple and Family History Activity, so many, so many fun things and videos to watch. Um, let's go to Family Heritage. See where you fit in your family tree. These are all just wonderful things that the youth can just do themselves and they can help teach the youngers if they have younger siblings. They can teach their peers. They can go to this anytime on any device and open it up and see what they can do to even spend just a few minutes doing family history to to get that not only um, be doing the responsibility to be doing it and learning about it but to feel the spirit of Elijah um, so that's family heritage weekly family history activities so many fun things every single one of these can just help get it and get the the whole idea, the whole concept of why we do family history and how fun it is into their hearts. Um, here's a list of all the blessings that have been promised that were in the video that we watched or many of them are listed here. So that's right there. They can review that. They can see how um, those blessings are being fulfilled in their lives because they'll be aware. They've just, um, if they just tap into this and, and read, about how they are helped by those that have gone on before our angels right um service is next and i have to tell you that my husband and i just did a workshop for a, a ward in lehigh and they were having a competition of indexing and they were using the new get involved app to work on the 1950s census and they were having a competition with the adults the adult leaders and parents and the youth. And I believe, I can't remember who was ahead, but even while we were talking, the youth would pull out their devices and they'd be indexing. They were so excited to do it. We know that youth love challenges and competition and they also love to be serving, which is what um, indexing does. It opens up a way to serve, okay? And so that's all on here, these ideas to discover and, and um, find ways to help those that have um, a need. 
we in our board have had 17 youth consultants at one time, and some of them are, are some of them are on missions now. But that is a great way to serve and to teach them how to learn about teaching others and the tools that are available and the family history guide. And, and when they serve others, they learn also and they're enriched. Um, this little picture here is our former bishop. And one of the things that our ward um, youth did to serve was to record the stories. Our bishop said that he cannot remember his father's voice. He was the youngest of like 11 children. And he does not that, want that to happen in his family. And so he was very willing to let our youth come and interview him. Some things we just don't think about doing unless we're reminded. And maybe things you would never think of doing are right here in the family history guide for you. Okay, so then we have, and this is one of my favorites, is the ward and state activities. And in addition to what we did to have a campaign to record the stories for people in our ward, especially the seniors. Um, here are some other ideas that can um, maybe work in your ward or in your state or in a group or in your family. Elder Bednar said that the youth need to be anxiously engaged in this work right now. They will help identify things to do. And I can verify that that is true. They come up with the craziest fun ideas. The kids in our ward right now, the young women in our ward, are trying to do a family history activity of some kind every single week as they do their other activities. And, and they've done things like put together a recipe book, just bringing recipes and sharing those. And, and now it's a ward recipe book because they're making the pizza sauce that Sarah brought um, that recipe or the peach cobbler from Barry down the street. And so that's been a crazy fun thing. And it was their idea um, and they, they've done relatives around me. They just do things that don't take very long, but they are consistently working on family history. Thanks to the leaders who help support and encourage that. So um, they are thinking of ways to accomplish this work that majestically move this war work all over the earth. And then Elder Bednar says, please do not underestimate what those ironic priesthood quorums and young women classes can accomplish. When the Elders Quorum, Relief Society's ironic priesthood quorums and young women classes are laser beam singularly focused on the work of salvation, the miracles that occur in the advan advancement of this work in the earth will be astronomical. And that is so true. Sometimes we just need to get out of their way as adults, give them some ideas, point them to the family history guide and say, hey, you come up with the ideas. You help teach in the family. You help teach in the ward and then um, with your groups, you just go for it, okay? So one of the things that they did do in our board, in fact, we've done it twice, is called the 21 Consecutive Day Challenge. And all the instructions are right here. The articles who, um, from which we took the idea, Sister Nelson's talks about how we can make habits and how family history um, consecutively um, can not only change our hearts, but help us make it, like I said, a habit to keep doing it. So all of that is right there, um, along with some ways that we did family history activities in our ward, in our ward and stake. So um, let's go, let's see. Well, we'll talk about just a couple more really quickly. Um, and we do have on the Granite Family History Center YouTube um, collection, we have in there our youth talking about the ward and stake activities that they have done. So we won't go over too many of these, um, but you can, you can find them right here. And then you can also find them one other place and I will show you where that is. Um, in fact, we'll go there right now. So here, here are all the youth activities that are on the youth site. If you go to at the activities tab, which is at the top right there, activities, and you go to family, this is still on the family history guide, and you go to number nine over here, five minute ideas for Latter-day Saint activities. Here is a list of 50 or 75 ideas that only take about five minutes. So 
Anybody can do that, right? Our youth can do five minutes a day. And especially if we have some reminders, if our, our house is like centered on family history and, and we take those rare moments to just stick in an activity and we create moments that um, maybe are um, something that we have thought about and we want to do and we encourage them to um, dig in and do it with us. Or we just say, hey, look through these and see what works. What do you want to do? What do you want to do in our family? And just sort through these. All of these have links. Um, if they have a blog or if they go to Family Search or My Heritage or Ancestry, um, they are all just right here. That's what I love about the Family History Guide is consolidated. All these ideas and all you have to do is open it up, look and see what looks fun to you. Here are lists of activities that are on um, the Family History Guide and some of the videos that you've seen to know, all of the videos that we've watched that are the activities are on the YouTube channel for the Family History Guide. And so here's a whole list of those so you can see how other families do it. And with youth, sometimes that is what they need. They need to see, okay, that's, that's fun. That family did it. They were having a blast. Let's try that. Okay. So so here's a ton of those ideas, charades, um, create your own quiz, help with a family reunion, help make a family reunion family history centered. They'll come up with crazy fun ideas. Um, and also here's the BYU Family History Tech Lab. And these are all direct links to fun games that they have come up with. And some of them might be familiar to you. And you can click on any one of those and learn how to do that with your own family. Jenny Operty, for example, um, which is taking everything from all these questions from your, your own part of the family tree. Okay, so you can go through these. We won't spend a lot more time. All the family search activities that look so fun. The links are, are linked down here, lots more. Um, and then down here at the bottom of this list are your resources. So you've got your activities for families, individuals, youth, and the kids corner, which are all on the family history guide. And the Come Follow Me Companion, which is what we will end with tonight. And then um, the other lists, in fact, um, the 21 Day Con uh, Connections Experiment is on here. And this is, this leads you to a page and a group on Facebook where they actually have so many ideas for youth to do. And they have plans that you can follow for 21 days as individuals, like we said, as a ward or with your family or groups. And then they have resources and how the experiment works, which is basically just to help people anywhere of any age do family history to be more calm and um, just more emotionally stable. And they have done experiments about that and you can read all about that it's so fun so anyway that's on there too the 21 day then 21 day experiment and we also have in the warden stake activities we have um how we have examples of how we did that in our ward for 21 days and what those five minute ideas were and so you can click on any of those links right um so Anyway, I hope that you will go back as you look at this video. If anything is not clear or if you have any questions, you can always email um, and get a hold of anybody on the Family History Guide and just by connecting with them. And um, anyway, I just can't say enough about number one, how the youth will be blessed by doing family history, how they will be able to um, not only just follow what the prophet says, but learn to love following him, love gathering Israel, love getting to know about their ancestors. And <clears throat> the last thing that we'll talk about tonight is the family history um, activities that you can do weekly along with Come Follow Me. And we have um, a video that I will show you on this, but basically we have come up with 
for every single week, four or five or more activities that have to do with that lesson for the week. They're correlated. So it extends what you're already doing, studying Come Follow Me, and adds family history activities so that you can be blessed as a family and as individuals by also coming up with ways to tuck family history into your study during the week. Um, so I'd love to show you this video. Let's see if that's gonna work for us. Let's go to about, okay, maybe right there. Come alive. One of the activity features that I love on the Family History Guide is correlated activities to Come Follow Me every single week. So I can log on, we do our Come Follow Me lesson, and then there's a little family history segment that gives me an idea of something we can just grab and go and do with our family instantly. It's so fun. So when we're together trying to do family history or family activities, it works a lot better when we do lots of different fun activities and they're active and involved, and they're able to be creative, even imitate some of the things that their ancestors have done. They really like that. We really like to do activities with our kids to teach them family history because they pay attention more, they're more likely to remember what they've learned and apply it in their lives. One of the weeks when we were studying Come Follow Me, we pulled up the companion and that week invited us to do a digital museum. So we were invited to run through the house. We had five minutes to find something that was precious to us related to our family history. And it was so fun to see what the kids came up with. I went and found my great grandma's butcher knife. Look at this thing. It is so precious to me. This is where her little finger was and it, it's worn out completely. I remember her using this um, for everything. And it was so fun to be able to share this with my kids and talk about her. And it was just an instant invitation. The, the activity was so successful because everybody grabbed something, there was a story associated with it. It was quick, easy, meaningful, done. During our museum activity, my son brought down something that was really special to him. When my mom asked me to get something special, I knew exactly what I was gonna get. My grandpa Raspberry always helped us with our Pima Derby cards. This is the last Pinewood Derby car I made, and I made it the year after he died. And through trials and mistakes, and so many mistakes, we ended up needing new wheels. And my grandma suddenly remembered that she had wheels that my grandpa Raspberry had hand sanded before he died. And ended up putting them on, and even though there were so many mistakes on it, I ended up winning first place in the Pinewood Derby car. It kind of makes me think like, he's pushing it down that track, you know? And through this experience, it made me feel so much closer to my grandpa Raspberry to know that he still cares about me through the other side. So here's another example from the Book of Mormon year. You can see that there are a variety of activities, some videos that you can look at to see how families are putting these principles into practice and doing the activities and having a blast. So remember, we were trying to find a way to get our grandchildren involved and turning their hearts to their ancestors. And we came up with the best idea. <laughs> it's crazy. So, Gather we, them together for this big fun activity. Let them look through Family Search and find out about their great grandparents, things they didn't know, and things that they could relate to. So, in closing, we hope that you have um, gathered and garnered some ideas that will work for you and your family with your children, especially with your youth. I have a deep respect for the youth of our church, for the youth of our world. I have a love of them and I feel the intense desire of our prophet and our leaders to depend or I should say their desire to have us be instruments to help the youth discover the power and the blessings of connecting with their past their past the stories that have been passed down to them to be able to have the tools and the instruments to to um, find names to take them to the temple 
to discover the stories about those people that they are serving. And all that can be so much helped by the Family History Guidance. So I'm so, so grateful for that. And I'm so grateful for this opportunity to talk about these things, to show you some tools that, and resources that will hopefully help you in your quest to help the youth in your life. And I leave this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Angel. <clears throat> the, uh, my screen is smoking. <laughs> but but that, that was great. There's so many fun things to do and, and so many things to get the youth all charged up and whatnot. In fact, here at the Family History Center, uh, we use um, a lot of those activities and some of the other sites uh, as well to do with the youth right. program that's here. And just as a reminder, you can see uh, Scott and Angel every Friday morning at 10 a.m. Mountain, Mountain Daylight Time now on Facebook on their uh, High Five Live uh, presentation there, the webinar. And uh, I would suggest if you get a chance that you uh, check in on that. Uh, it's high energy as well. So, you know, stay someplace where you feel safe and they'll bless <laughs> fun things right at you every time. They That's right. And also um, those videos that we do, and we've done them for almost two years now, maybe two years. Um, so we interview people and we talk to them about the gathering. And you can watch those anytime by searching Angel in the High Five Live page on Facebook. And it's fun stuff. Well, thank you again. And uh, just to mention that this video will be posted up on the uh, granitefhc.com site. Uh, they're usually posted by the end of the week uh, or so. Just go to the site and click under um, the resources tab or the videos tab, and you can find those and view them for yourself. So thank you very much, Angel. Thank you for having me. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.